I am in a high tech facility in Chennai, which is the offices of the Agni Cool Cosmos Private Limited, an Indian space startup. And this is the rocket Agni Barn, which is going to be, have a launch very soon in a suborbital manner. There are many firsts in this rocket. One of them comes from this 3D printing machine behind me. And I have with me Mr. Moin SPM. He is a founder of this Agni Cool startup. And Mr. Moin, how is Agni Cool gearing up for its first launch? First of all, thank you for having me, sir. Uh, yes, we are getting up for our first launch. It's going to be a suborbital tech demonstrator. We are calling it this as Agniban Sorted. That's what we are calling this as. Which means basically when we do our orbital flight, all the systems have been qualified in this test. That's exactly what we are targeting. So the rocket, your model looks something like this? Yes, this is a mock-up model of the orbital flight. Uh, the one that we have that is going to be like you know tested pretty soon, uh, that is going to feature one engine that has actually come straight out of this machine. What is this machine? So it's a 3D printer. So we actually manufacture the engines here, and this are the this is the place where you manufacture engines, and the engines will be operated in space. So it takes us around three days to manufacture an engine in this particular machine. Yes, we do have the pre-processing and the post-processing along with the processes of the 3D printing. But having built a rocket engine in, let's say, around uh, two weeks is actually the coolest way of innovation is what we think. Now, you have a part in your hand. Is this Correct. 3D printed? Yes, the part that I have in my hand is also 3D printed. This is an igniter of the engine. Similarly, we have 3D printed the entire rocket engine. So, a rocket engine has almost nearly 1000 parts. So, if we print independently and try to conventionally manufacture this, this would take us somewhere around 6 months and it would take us another 3 months to qualify each of that, each of that parts. And then you have to fuse them together as well. Now, for us, with this machine, we have been able to manufacture, as I told you, in three days, complete an entire process in two weeks. And we have a production capacity of at least eight engines per, per month. Wonderful. Let, let me hold this and take, savor this particular part, which is 3D printed and a beautiful looking part. And let us now walk around and see. Now, what is the hallmark of Agni Cool's rocket. What is your speciality? Why is it the world getting excited by your rocket? So there are a lot of things, sir. <laughs> so I'll start with like, you know, something that is very close to us. One is the semi-cryogenic part. So we've had options to choose to go between solids and liquids. We chose to go the liquids way because I think that's that's how the entire world is also going and it is more feasible to scale up and down as you wish and it has a lot of more benefits such as reusability and all of these parts and uh, we would be complementing isro in this because we we have seen like you know isro doing a lot of stuff on the solids as well as they're working on the liquids part as well but this flight will be the india's first semi cryogenic flight and there's a twist to it as well uh, the propellants that we use are liquid oxygen and aviation turbine Turbation, aviation turbine fuel actually. Meaning the same fuel which airplanes use. Exactly. So this is fuel that is being used by the airplane. We'll be using it to propel ourselves to go to space. And the liquid oxygen is just medical grade liquid oxygen, the ones that have been used in the hospital. So the idea is like you use consumables, the propellants that are easily available, you put them and you're ready to go to space. That's the first thing that like you know, I would now, like to highlight. But your rocket is small. Correct. Your payload capacity is small. Correct. Why should people launch such small satellites and why should they come to you? So there are two things. So first, uh, before they used to build big satellites, right? And they used to go to orbits such as Geo. Then there's a shift in the market trend itself. Now they build small satellites. That's because you don't want to risk all your eggs in one basket. So you can have a relay of constellations and still do the same job. And even if one part of your satellite is not working, you can still launch again and fulfill it again. So which means like the electronics have been shrinking, 
Similarly, the satellites have also shrink in size over the period of years. And come to lower orbit. And yes, and then they have come closer to Earth. So our understanding is in the future it will still shrink down. And you definitely need smaller rockets. That's where we came in with this concept of building small rockets. And more importantly, we've always seen something called as a right share business model in this particular industry. So the, uh, the small satellite manufacturers were only considered after the vehicle was filled. But right now, even the small satellite manufacturers can have an opportunity to be an owner of their own mission. They could have dedicated launches for themselves. So that was the idea. And we saw this in the recent uh, aspect as well, uh, that data is everything. And more importantly, Earth observation and uh, communication satellites are the best way to actually get the data. And that's how exactly things are. Now is this also a model where you can have a launch on demand? Exactly, sir. Because uh, as I told you, it takes only like, you know, lesser time for us to manufacture the engines and pretty much everything. We are focusing on on-demand launch vehicles. So that's why we have also built something called as a mobile launch pad, which we call it as Dhanush. So our vehicle is called Agniban, which means a fire of a, an arrow of fire. Dhanush means where you actually can actually launch it. So our aim is like, you know, to, our tagline goes like launch anywhere, anytime and affordably. Anywhere is wherever you want. Anytime is basically on demand and affordably is what we are. We are, we are from a country that actually can do stuff, even greater technologies at an affordable price. That's what it is. I wish you luck in your first launch which yes, will be sir. a very interesting launch because you have the first private launch pad sitting inside India's main rocket port at Sriharikota and the world and India are waiting to see a good launch from you. Thanks a lot. Thank for you, sir. Me. Thanks a lot, sir. So that was Moen SPN, one of the co-founders of Agni Cool, telling us why Agni Cool is cool and why India and the world is excited because their rockets can be done on demand, affordably and with using materials which are not very expensive. The Indian startup ecosystem in space has revved up big time and Agni Cool is one leader in that. At the Agnikul facility in Chennai, Palau Bagla.